one you've been hearing about, the one you've been waiting for. IWC AAA Lucha Libre. Mask versus hair. Make that double mask versus double hair. Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine against Hijo Del Santo and Octagon. It's IWC against AAA. Pegasus Kid, Two Cold Scorpio, and Tito Santana against Terry Estrada, La Parca, and the Blue Panther. The minis are here. The midget match kicks it off on this pay-per-view tonight. Espectrito, Chirito Estrada against Mascarita Sagrada and Octagon Cito. And in the battle for respect, it's Madonna's boyfriend, Fuerza Guerrera, and Psychosis against Rey Mysterio Jr., Heavy Metal, and the Latin Lover. And the main event in a 10-foot-high steel cage, it's the much-loved Pedro Aguayo versus the much-hated Conan. The special cage match here, live and exclusively on pay-per-view. Now, when worlds collide, live from the L.A. Sports Arena. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Cruz. There are thousands of fans here at the L.A. Sports Arena and millions watching live and exclusively on pay-per-view. When worlds collide, IWC AAA. It's finally here, the wrestling style that is sweeping the world. A double hair versus double mask match live right here tonight and in the tallest cage I have ever seen. It's the much loved Pedro Aguayo taking on the much hated Conan. And now to greet our live audience here at the LA Sports Arena, please make welcome Arturo Rivera. Rudos, Rudos, Rudos. Gracias, Chris Cross. Esto es la lucha libre mexicana. Nunca antes en la historia de este hermoso deporte se había podido conjugar tantas estrellas. Y claro, todo esto, la lucha de jaula entre Conan y el perro aguayo, ha sido posible traerla para el mejor público. ¡Ustedes! ¡Viva México! ¡Bienvenidos a Pago por Evento! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mike Tenay. Welcome to the historic L.A. Sports Arena, the site of so many great events through the years, and history will be made again tonight when we present for the very first time on day for you, when World Collide, featuring the stars of AAA and IWC, the Red Hot International Wrestling Promotion that has taken Mexico and the world by storm. We're ready to kick off the show. Chris Cruz will join us in minutes. And the mini superstars are headed to the ring. This is Espec Frito, the AAA World Minis Champion. Chris Cruz, welcome back to the microphone. Espec Frito is in the ring. Jerito Estrada making his way down the aisle. And we are ready to get this pay-per-view kicked off. I was not ready for the fireworks, nor was I ready for the incredible noise inside the ring. I wasn't sure, Mike, if I was even coming over the PA. It is going to be a great night here live in Los Angeles. You're right, in the ring now, Espectrito. And Cerrito Estrada. Now Estrada is five feet tall. You hear that? He is the tallest by far of the mini superstars. And Chris Cruz, you notice that he will use that size advantage to almost bully his opponent. And one of those opponents is making his way to the ring, Octagoncito. Octagoncito is the conventionally sized Octagon Cito is the smaller version of Octagon. Octagon to be here a little bit later in this pay-per-view broadcast. And Octagon is the number one seller of merchandise. In many ways, the most popular wrestler in Mexico. And now here comes Ascarita Sagrada. All four of these minis are actually smaller versions of the full-size AAA stars. There is no captain in this match as there normally are. And uh, as it normally is, I beg your pardon, in a uh, Lucha Libre style match. We have two referees. This is a 15 minute time limit. It's the Mini Super Estrellas. And as you might know, Mike, there is some history between at least two of these Mexican superstars. Well, there sure is a tremendous sense of history between Mascarita Sagrada, of course, and Espec Trito. Espec Trito, the current World Minis champion. The two have feuded right here in the Los Angeles Sports Arena. 
Back in August of 94, Sagrada defeated Espectrito in a mask versus mask match. Espectrito unmasked that night, and since he has returned and is wearing the green face paint, as you see in the ring. And also, Mike, as you know, this past summer, Espectrito, with some outside help, defeated Sagrada for the World Minis Championship. So even, even though that championship is not on the line, there is a whole lot at stake here in terms of pride tonight. These two men have, as you said, swapped the title back and forth, and they have a chance now to prove to this L.A. crowd again who is the superior wrestler, either Mascarita Sagrada or Espectrito. Interesting that both Espectrito and Mascarita Sagrada are 10-year veterans, and they both debuted in their current role back in August of 1989. Their careers have pretty much parallel. We see now the officials being introduced, and this takes some uh, time for us to uh, really bring out the background on the officials. You see Pepe Casas. He wears the headband. He is the senior official of AAA, a legendary tough guy as a wrestler. He trained many of today's stars, including his sons. We will see one of his sons, heavy metal, later in the broadcast. The other official, Tarantes is his name. Translated to English, that means suspenders. You see the suspenders that he's wearing. A former wrestler from Veracruz, a villain his entire career, Chris, as a wrestler, and he finds it tough to be impartial at times. There's no doubt that he is going to uh, look at the, uh, as they say, the Rudo side with much more affection than he does the technicals. And now the bell rings, and it is a 15-minute time limit match, one fall, which again is a little bit different than normal. That's Espectrito. And he can move incredibly fast, but so can Octagoncito. Oh, look at that! A head scissors, he whips it around, almost a version of Frankensteiner. Espectrito goes flying towards the back, and I don't blame him. Interesting to note, Octagon Cito, you see him in the ring now with the mask. He is only 20 years old. He's wrestled for four years as a professional, starting at age 16. A very solid performer in the ring. And oh my! And Octagon Cito held on, and Derito Estrada is rocked. We've seen this before. Octagon Cito can really fly. He hangs onto the ropes. And in comes Mascarita Sagrada for the first time. Now you see why he is considered one of the best wrestlers, regardless of his size. I think at this point we need oh. to talk about the size differences. You see Jurito Estrada in the ring. The height limit for the minis is five feet tall. And he just barely makes it. Interesting to note oh. as Jurito goes through the ring ropes. They arrived at that size limit, Chris, by using the height of the smallest regular sized wrestler. That was a wrestler by the name of Super Astro at five feet, one half inch. They figured that anyone smaller than that would be considered a mini superstar. Espectrito, nails Sagrada. He has got tremendous strength. And the referee moves in and says, back off. Now we should add, Mike, that you do not need to tag in the Lucha Libre style if your opponent is thrown out of the ring. And in fact, that happened when Espectrito was thrown outside of the ring. In comes Jerito Estrada. You do not need to tag if your opponent is thrown outside the ring. There are several rules differences between the AAA IWC style of wrestling, the Lucha Libre style, as opposed to wrestling as you know it in the United States. As this match progresses and as the card goes on tonight, we will be describing those differences in detail. And Sagrada is in trouble now as the big man, Estrada, comes in with a big boot and as we mentioned he will use this size advantage to uh, almost bully his opponents these four uh, wrestlers these midgets considered by many the four best midget wrestlers of all time i think little beaver and skylar low might have some problem with that but at this point they are clearly the best midget wrestlers in the world today estrada comes down and so does mascarita sagrada they are dominating and we thought this would happen at least early on Clearly, Espectrito and Jerito Estrada are much bigger than Octagoncito and Mascarita Sagrada. Oh, he picks them up by the mask. And as he pulls oh. off the mask, Chris, we should let everyone know it's an automatic disqualification if you happen to pull your opponent's mask off. Octagoncito, much like the full-size Octagon, is a martial arts expert. And you just saw the martial arts expertise of Espectrito, so he's going to fight him. And now the referees, another difference, I think, Mike, is that the referees tend to get a little bit more physically involved than they do in the American style. Oh, yes, they sure do one other thing, Chris, an automatic disqualification for referee abuse of any kind. 
Look at those solid rights by Espectrito. Again, we have no captain, so it does not matter which member of the team is pinned. Up the Goncito is in real trouble right now. They are live on pay-per-view from the L.A. Sports Arena. Total domination in the early going by the team of Espectrito and Gerito Estrada. And the tag attempted to be made, apparently not made to Mascarita. And here comes Gerito into the ring. And I'm not sure if that was a tag or a high five, but there, well, I thought we had a tag there to Sagrada. Look at the size of Estrada and Espectro. Oh, my! A boot. I beg your pardon, he's barefoot, so a boot would be tough, but a foot under the chin of Octoroncito. Again, as you mentioned earlier, if you are knocked from the ring, there is no tag required for you to enter. And Sagrada holds on. Oh, Espectro. I don't need to describe it, only to say that he has hurt himself. And this may be just what Octoroncito and Mascarita Sagrada need. Oh, a low blow. Now, that's an automatic disqualification, should the official see it. But you see it was behind the referee's back. We talked about Tarantes earlier being impartial. A longtime villain as a wrestler. He seems to look the other way when some of the villainous wrestlers put the tactics on their opponents. And, and at that point, he certainly did. Well, Estrada missed that by a country mile. Well, Octagoncito missed. He just pushes Estrada back, almost like he's positioning him. Look at this. Estrada kicks out. There's no count. Oh, up the gun, Cito goes high, but he hangs on. Just incredible non-stop action from all four. Look at that, Frankenstein. A couple of slaps to no effect, and that kick almost a low blow puts Octagon Cito in the wrong corner, and Estrada takes way too much time, and he's outside the ring now. You have a 20 count on the floor in Lucha Libre. We also need to mention that tag team matches, uh, upcoming bouts, will be fought under captain's rules. Each team has to designate a captain, and when we have one of those in one of the six fans, we will definitely discuss those rules. Well, that is clearly a taunt. He's not calling his name. That's Espectrito. With a very good side headlock, and look at that hold there by Jarito. Jarito, Estrada, I beg your pardon. These are the two men in the ring that you see now that have been feuding over the world's minis title for the past several months. As we mentioned, Espectrito losing his mask right here in the L.A. Sports Arena to Mascarita Sagrada. A chance for him now to gain some revenge and some redemption. Oh, look at that! A hip lock takeover, and he went flying, and again! That's why we call them in American wrestling Mexican arm drags. Sagrada, look at... Oh, oh what a tremendous move. He knows exactly where he is in the ring at all times. And Espectrito, he's going to hesitate. And Mascarita Sagrada, he bumps up. And again on the second row. What was that? Frankensteiner off the second row. The lights go on. And Espectrito wants nothing better than to go back to the locker room. Jericho Estrada is out. Espectrito quickly back in up to Goncito with just a basic push. It does its work. Look at the acrobatic maneuvers there of up to Goncito. And Sagrada off the top rope. I think, Chris, here comes Mascarita for a dive. He fakes him out. Oh, he's up for the assigned moonsault. And Espectrito landed right in his head. Up to Goncito now. What's going to happen here? He hangs on as well. Will this be a dive? Yes, it will! Octagon Chito nailed Chirito all the way to the floor with that dive through the ropes. How are they going to get back in in the 20 count? Seeing, and, well, Espectrito is back in. Seeing Mascarita Sagrada with those unbelievable acrobatic and high-risk maneuvers reminds me of just months ago right here at the sports arena when Mascarita Sagrada jumped off the top of the steel cage onto Jake Roberts. The man is fearless oh. in the ring. And right now, he's outside the ring, Mike, and unfortunately, Jorito Estrada is going to pick it up and probably throw. I was going to say throw it back in, but from the left side, a body slam. And Octagon Cito, now this has been non-stop, and what a clothesline that was from Espectrito. This is just a small example of what you're going to see as the evening progresses. And you see the non-stop action involved with these mini superstars. One of the major reasons why AAA and IWC becoming one of the most red-hot international promotions around the world. 
And look at this teamwork from Sagrada and up to Nancito. That's going to be it. Here comes the pin. Come on, one, two, and three. That's it. Sagrada and up to Nancito have defeated Estrada and Espectrito. And listen to the fans in the jam-packed L.A. Sports Arena go wild. Sagrada is not... It's, I beg your pardon, is not the world minis champion. However, they have defeated Espectrito and Sagrada, and clearly Sagrada will get another shot at Espectrito for the world championship. And here it goes again, Mike. No doubt about it. Look at this move. Coming off the middle rope, Frankensteiner, and he sent Espectrito right underneath the bottom rope, all the way to the floor, and that pretty much the beginning of the end. The backdrop. And then Mascarita Sagrada able to spring all the way to the top. Tremendous moonsault, nailing Espectrito for the victory. Well, the referee's getting over there a little bit slowly, but we did get the count. It was about a five count. A three count accomplished in five seconds. Wow, what an opener. Look at all the fans here at the LA Sports Arena. They are here to see what is considered by many, Mike, as the hottest promotion worldwide. We have seen AAA Lucha Libre succeed tremendously in Mexico, as well as in Central, throughout Central America, South America, soon to be, I believe, a big hit in Japan and in Europe as well. No doubt about that, Chris. Matter of fact, a big tour of Japan scheduled in just a couple of weeks that's going to take this promotion to another level. And next, the battle for respect. It is a six-man match. Madonna's boyfriend, known as Luis Piccoli as well, against the leader, Fuerza Guerrera, and 24-year-old Sicosis, considered by many possibly the best wrestler in Mexico, Mike. Fuerza Guerrera is, actually the translation is warrior force. It's a battle name, joining Madonna's boyfriend, as you mentioned, as well as Psychosis, and they will meet three of the rising young stars of AAA, Rey Mysterio Jr., Heavy Metal, and Latin Lover. We talk about this being a battle for respect, as you see, and this evolves from these three young AAA stars. They're all under the age of 25. They're trying to gain the respect of not only the older veterans, but also move up the ladder of success in AAA. And here comes Fuerza Guerrera, Psychosis, and Madonna's boyfriend of the ring. Fuerza Guerrera is 40 years old. Five foot three, 170 pounds. Madonna's boyfriend, this is his first big event for AAA, a new member of the Los Gringos Locos. And there is Sikosis, 24 years old, from Tijuana. That's Madonna's boyfriend, as if there could be just one. Yeah, I'm thinking with a ring lane like uh, Madonna's boyfriend, that's not a very exclusive club, is it, Chris? No, indeed. Luis Piccoli, along with Conan, Love Machine, Eddie Guerrero, plus the Black Cat and Mysterioso, somewhat like the four horsemen from NWA and WCW fame, they are called Los Gringos Locos. And hang on for the explosion we're gonna get here. There he is. Heavy metal leads the charge out to the ring. Rey Mysterio Jr. in the mask, and of course, Latin Lover. The heavy metal is the captain, and here is the key difference. You have got to pin either the captain or Latin Lover and Rey Mysterio Jr. both. The captain for the other team is Fuerza Guerrera. And we're going to see action non-stop here. This is one fall, a 15-minute time limit match. And already the action has begun without even the ring jackets being taken off. Not even going to wait for the bell here as Madonna's boyfriend goes right to work on Latin Lover, sending him to the floor. And you hear in the background for the predominantly Spanish-speaking audience here at the LA Sports Arena, the introductions to the crowd of the individual wrestlers. And these are the rudos, as they call them, the bad guys. Madonna's boyfriend, based in Southern California, he has experience in both the US and the Mexican styles. As you mentioned, just recently joining full-time with AAA, Psychosis. 27-year-old native of Tijuana, Mexico. Influenced, as you see, in style and costume by Jushin Thunder Liger of Japan. And Fuerza Guerrera, the leader, nicknamed the Mosquito of Merced, Mexico. You notice the mosquito-type design on the mask. Sikosis was a, is trained, actually, with Rey Mysterio Jr. They began wrestling school together, and it is going to be frightening in the way he puts his body on the line, as well as for Rey Mysterio Jr., 19 years old. 
five foot two inches tall, 145 pounds. And now you hear the introduction of Heavy Metal, who, as we said, is the captain of the team and Latin lover. That's him right there. Chris, well, I part. You, know, you mentioned Ray Mysterio Jr. He is only 19 years old. He made his in-ring debut at the age of 14 back in 1989, actually a five-year pro. And that's not all that unusual in Mexico. It's almost uh, similar to women in tennis in the United States, the fact that these youngsters get uh, involved with wrestling at such an early age. And due to the weight classes that they have in Mexico, they're encouraged to enter at uh, a younger age. Well, it's, it's uh, Fuerza Guerrera against Heavy Metal early on in this match. And once again, the captains are Heavy Metal and Fuerza Guerrera. And you're going to see that move a heck of a lot in Lucha Libre. It's almost as much of a humiliating move as it is a pure wrestling move intended to do damage. And we see two of the possible superstars of the future in Lucha Libre in Rey Mysterio Jr. and Psychosis. This is the pairing that we've been looking for. As you said earlier, these two went to the same wrestling training camp. They've been rivals since then. This is their opportunity to shine on pay-per-view. And Rey Mysterio Jr. has come up with some moves that we have literally never seen. He recovers from places that we think nobody can recover from, just like this. Look at that. And look out, Sikosis goes far away from the ring because he knows Rey Mysterio Jr. can come at you from many, oh, from a, I would guess about a half a mile away from the ring. This guy can fly. In comes the big man, Luis Piccoli, who is not intimidated by the size of the former Super Nino in Mexico, the super kid. Look at the strength of Spicoli. And look at the size difference, too. Spicoli and Rey Mysterio Jr. I'm sure he's going to take a good advantage of this size difference, and now he goes to the strut. And Rey Mysterio, I, I think Luis Piccoli knew what, what Rey Mysterio was about to do. And again, he's just 145 pounds, and frankly, Mike, this is not all that impressive a press. And a slap to the face to add uh, a little bit more disrespect. And now Ray from the top. Oh! I'm not sure that Luis Piccoli is going to be able to catch Ray Mysterio Jr. that way. It doesn't hurt him, though. Piccoli's a tough guy, and now Latin lover. He's six foot one, 235 pounds, the former bodybuilder. And he can mix it up with somebody the size of Luis Piccoli. Also, actually, a male stripper before he came into wrestling. So his character that he plays, actually what he became before, before he entered professional wrestling. He's been with AAA for just one year. How'd you find that out? <laughs> Unbelievable, the sources I have. He's been wrestler for three years, and he can bump and grind with the best of them. And the fans really respond to that, although a lot of folks like Luis Piccoli here as well. Rather ineffectual, it does bounce the Latin lover off. In September, along with heavy metal, he won the Mexican tag team titles. Oh, a clothesline, American style, and Spicoli again. You've heard that white man can't jump. Maybe they can't dance either if you judge by Spicoli. The Irish whip, a clothesline missed by the Latin lover. He's given us a bad name. Oh, what a super kick. Again, we've got a 20 count outside the ring. However, if somebody is knocked outside the ring, you do not have to tag. Members of the other team can come right in, and it looks like neither Sikosis nor Fuerza Guerrera want to meet Heavy Metal. And we should point out Heavy Metal's real name, Eric Casas. And you know who his father is, Mike. He sure is. He is the son. Heavy Metal is the son of the referee that is wearing the bandana. That's Heavy Casas, as, as well as Tarantes, as you see with the suspenders. And Sikosis with a clothesline out of nowhere. Heavy Metal, a very close second in the high-risk moves category to Rey Mysterio Jr. and Sikosis, who I think everybody would consider a pretty much tied for third, and a close line by Heavy Metal out of nowhere as well. Heavy Metal, six years as a pro. We mentioned trained by his father. He changed his villainous ways, and look at that move off the top. And Sikosis comes right outside of the turnbuckle. The Irish whip by Heavy Metal. Sikosis tries to recover, misses a clothesline, and a pull of the hair. That long mane of the imposing Sikosis.
heavy metal changed his villainous ways after a feud with El Santo. He was inspired by that series of matches. And at one time, in fact, heavy metal teamed with Fuerza Guerrero. It's just in the last year that he has come over to the side of the Technicals. And now, Super Nino, Rey Mysterio Jr., a slap from the 40-year-old leader. And Henry Costa says, I didn't like that move at all. And neither did Rey Mysterio. Chris Cruz, Mike today, calling the action live here, exclusively on pay-per-view from the jam-packed LA Sports Arena. Mysterio Jr., that's an ineffectual football tackle. Oh, look at this flying maneuver. And Fuerza Guerrero does some damage. I can't even begin to call that. Again, Fuerza Guerrero, the captain of this team. Chris, Rey Mysterio Jr. and Fuerza, who just had that exchange, are at odds over a feud that Rey Jr. has been having with Fuerza's son, Juventud Guerrera, who recently defeated Rey Mysterio Jr. for the lightweight title. Interesting to point out, Mike, that in our research we found out in 1992, Rey Mysterio Jr. won the national welterweight title. He was 17 years old at the time, and so winning it, he became the youngest champion in the history of Lucha Libre. He's American, he's bilingual, raised in San Diego, but he has really been taken to heart by the fans of Lucha Libre, especially in Mexico. I'm not quite sure what Sakosis is gonna do, and I guess is he's not quite sure either. Well, when you think of Sakosis, the translation, Psycho, and you seeing that right in the ring. Again, it is frightening the way that he puts his body on the line for this great sport. Oh, look at that. Lands on his neck and on his head. And he knows he's in trouble, and he heads outside the ring. And unfortunately, you see, Luis Picoli, Madonna's boyfriend, back right off the ring apron. He's getting up now, but so reluctantly. And Fuerza Guerrero says, I guess I'll try to get back in. Will Heavy Metal get him a break? The captain of the team against the captain of the Rudos. And Fuerza Guerrero, it looks like, knew exactly what he was planning for Heavy Metal. The Irish whip. Oh, blow, blow. And again, the officials did not see it. It looked from our vantage point like Tarantis had a clear view. And Tarantis says it was on the inside of the thigh. That was not. That was a low blow, but Pepe Casas could not disqualify because... Oh. I guess turnabout fair play. And now Pepe, and there Casas. Pepe Casas. He acknowledges Tarantis, not a low blow. That's great. In comes Luis Picola, and he breaks the hole. And again, the referees have a lot of latitude in deciding whether or not the wrestlers are going to tag a suplex. And the big man, Spicoli, drops. Oh, it was blocked. Heavy metal dropped the knee. I beg your pardon, blocked the knee. And now Louis Spicoli goes outside. He is an undisciplined wrestler. He's going to take care of business inside the ring. Here comes that size advantage. We're going to see what... Madonna's boyfriend has on his mind. He's going to power slam him. Apparently, he's got him picked up. Where's he going to throw him? Oh, oh right outside of the fourth the row. Unbelievable. And look at all the fans literally go to the rescue of Ray Mysterio Jr. He landed on the concrete. It's essentially three against two now, and Fuerza Guerrero lights into heavy metal. There's another example. I think our viewers just saw Tarantes holding heavy metal back and allowing Fuerza Guerrero to nail him with the punch. Well, as great as Wayne Mysterio Jr. is, as we said, he's only 5'2", 145 pounds. How is he going to deal with a guy the size of Madonna's boyfriend? The Technicos clearly in trouble right now in this match. Sikosis, Fuerza Guerrera in the ring against Heavy Metal. And a double boot. And in comes Latin Lover. Give him credit. He's not going to give up. A snap mare. And Latin Lover is now being beat upon by Sikosis. It looked like the flat of the boot right into the neck. And then Fuerza Guerrera follows up with an elbow. Now you notice some of the leeway that we mentioned earlier is that the officials will allow the wrestlers. Latin Lover is going to be wondering where Rey Mysterio Jr. and Heavy Metal are. In comes Rey Mysterio Jr. He's clearly been injured, and Sakosis knows that and moves right in. This is the matchup of the two students from the same team, and look at that. He just threw him away. About seven feet up, if not more, and Rey Mysterio Jr., miracle of miracles, is still on his feet, and he hangs on. 
from seven feet up and drives the face, the mush of Zakotis right into the ring. All right, Luis Bacoli is in. I'm not sure what, if anything, Mike, the Rey Mysterio Jr. can do. A great entrance there by Latin Lover. Oh, my. Flares and Latin exchanging blows. And Latin Lover should get the best of this, and it looks like he's about to. Oh, super kick just nailed Fuerza. Almost like an uppercut with the flat of the boot. The whip now into the turnbuckle. And Latin Lover knew what was coming, and Fuerza Guerrero felt what was coming. Almost a variation of the power bomb out of the corner. A tremendous body slam. Latin Lover, who is not known as the best high flyer in Lucha Libre, nonetheless can operate off the top rope, especially when Fuerza Guerrero is flat out. This could be it. And Guerrero moves. High risk maneuver by Latin Lover did not pay off, obviously. And here goes Fuerza. A version of the Scorpion Deathlock into almost a Boston crowd. We told you you would see some dress taking action here. And you have seen it so far, and we're only two matches in. I hope our voices can hold out, Mike. Non-stop action, unbelievable acrobatics, great daredevil moves by the stars of AAA and IWC. You are going to see a lot of dives here, a lot of rope action. Totally unpredictable. And Cuerza Guerrera, it looks like, at 40 years old, is suffering the blows of these young Turks. And Heavy Metal backs up. Oh, a spinning reverse kick. And Guerrero goes out, and Sakotis comes in and misses. And the tide has turned to the Technicos. Oh, could, how could he have? I can't believe it. Unbelievable balance off the top rope. Oh, look at that, Sakotis. Luckily, tucked his neck under and was not injured, and heavy metal goes outside. Tilt a world backbreaker in the ring by Rey Mysterio Jr. on Fuerza. But now Madonna's boyfriend comes in to make it a two on one situation. We promised a wild style. Style, I beg your pardon. Quicker and fast paced action. And Rey Mysterio Jr. can create moves out of nowhere. He thinks literally not on his feet, but in the air. And Fuerza Guerrero is forced into his own partner. And look out, Mysterio is on the third rope. He dives right on to Madonna's boyfriend. Unbelievable somersault off the top rope by Rey Mysterio Jr. on to Madonna's boyfriend out on the floor. This is the most eagerly anticipated event of the Mexican community since the World Cup of Soccer, and you can see why. When worlds collide, we're live on pay-per-view. And Fuerza Guerrero goes into the turnbuckle to no effect. Heavy metal with a suplex. Amazing cat quickness to the top, but he missed. These, of course, two former teammates. They know each other extremely well. The body slam by Guerrero. And he essentially sits on the neck of heavy metal. Well, that was a submission. Wow. That's it. The Rudos have won. We were informed, Mike, that this would be one fall. This may have been changed to a two out of three fall match. We'll try to get word for the fans on that. And that's another thing that you will see in Mexican wrestling that you won't see very often in the catch as catch can style of American wrestling is submission. Well, victory here, obviously, for the team of Madonna's boyfriend, Fuerza Guerrero and Psychosis. And now they are going to add a little insult to injury, shall we say, as Fuerza Guerrero just pounds heavy metal to the mat. It's going to be very difficult for Pepe Casas, the uh, father of heavy metal, Eder Casas, to just stand there. But he has got to do what he's got to do. He's an official referee here. It's difficult, but he does his job and does it well. Well, it was a one-fall match for being told it ended just that quickly to the winners, Madonna's boyfriend, Fuerza Guerrero and Sekotis. This is how the community here in Los Angeles and throughout Southern California has responded, Mike, to AAA Lucha Libre. They have packed the L.A. Sports Arena. Terrific crowd on hand. You see on the replay, Fuerza Guerrero, the body slam, step over, bars the arm, the submission, and uh, you see referee Tarantes right there to look to see if there's going to be, and there's the sign, the tap, 
you see Heavy Metal taps out, and where's a Guerrera? Madonna's boyfriend and Psychosis victorious in this six-man tag team matchup over the team of Rey Mysterio Jr., Heavy Metal, and Latin Lover, who now get the cheers from the crowd post-match. And once again, fans, let me say that Rey Mysterio Jr. at 5'2", 145 pounds, may be the future of Mexican wrestling. And we may have to actually stop calling it Mexican wrestling, Mike, if it's as popular throughout Japan, Europe, Central, and South America as it is in Mexico and in Southern California. Terrific success story for this promotion. In addition to all these great cards in Los Angeles, they recently debuted in Chicago and New York. And we mentioned earlier they're headed to Japan for a big tour. Quite an international group, and they're taking the wrestling world by storm. All right, the match that is scheduled between the IWC wrestlers and the AAA wrestlers. Pegasus Kid, who we have seen before as Chris Benoit, teams up with Cheeto Santana and Two Cold Scorpio to take on the Blue Panther, La Parca, and Jerry El Puma Estrada. Interesting, Mike, that Cheeto Santana, who is of Mexican heritage, actually of that team, is the one who is least familiar with the Mexican style. Very true, Chris, in all the years that he spent in wrestling, so many of those, of course, in the World Wrestling Federation, 16 years of pro in total for Tito Santana, but you're right, he never wrestled on a regular basis in Mexico. Mike, for those fans, I beg your pardon, for those fans of American-style wrestling who saw the promotion on World Championship Wrestling, probably initially they said, well, we'll certainly buy it, but we wonder what we've gotten ourselves into. I'm sure they're happy at this point. No doubt about that. Now you see the, on the way to the ring, Two Cold Scorpio, the Pegasus Kid, Chris Benoit, and Tito Santana. Well, you are going to hear a mixture of cheers and boos because clearly this is a Mexico-leaning crowd. It is not exactly anti-American. It's just a matter of the Mexicans cheering for their own team. It is going to be interesting to see who the fans side with. The three Mexican stars or the three stars of IWC. Like a reminder for those fans who want some exclusive behind-the-scenes uh, reports, they can call the WCW hotline. I know you'll be filing some reports tonight at 1-900-909-9900. You'll also be talking, I believe, about the clash and the next big pay-per-view coming up for World Championship Wrestling that is Starcade on December 27th. We'll be telling you a little bit more about that as well as the Clash of Champions as the night progresses here live from Los Angeles. Now there's the Puma, the brawler, Jerry Estrada. This guy is not pretty. His wrestling style is not pretty, Mike, but he really gets the job done inside the ring. A wrestler's wrestler, so to speak, Chris. 16 years of pro, titles galore, including the World Light Heavyweight Championship on two occasions. A working class wrestler that you really want on your side in a fight. And that's the Blue Panther. He is the captain of this team. Tito Santana, Two Cold Scorpio, and Pegasus Kid must pin the Blue Panther or La Parca and Estrada to win this match. That is La Parca. There is La Parca, the current Mexican light heavyweight champion. As you see, he wears the belt to the ring. He's actually a character from Mexico's Day of the Dead. It's a tradition, much like Halloween here in the United States. It's celebrated on November the 2nd, so he just had his uh, big party just days ago. Pegasus Kid, the captain for the team representing IWC. I think much like Dion Sanders likes to be called Prime Time or Neon Dion, Chris Benoit just likes the name Pegasus Kid. He's had tremendous success as that character, as that name in Japan. Sometimes he wears a mask, sometimes he doesn't. But he could steal this show tonight, Mike, like New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani's son does during his father's speeches. And I think like Tom Arnold did in the movie True Lies. So we've got to watch this guy very, very closely. Truly an international star, 27-year-old Canadian. He was originally trained by Stu Hart, the Hart family up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. He's mastered the U.S. style, the Japanese style, as well as the Mexican and European. He is considered by some to be simply the best wrestler in the world, but the fact is, he has yet to prove that he can turn on the fans. He is certainly respected more in Japan and Germany and Mexico than he is in his native Canada or in the United States. But along with Tuco Scorpio, he may be the most high-flying uh, non-Mexican wrestler here tonight. Two Gold Scorpio, the former WCW Tag Team Champion, along with Marcus Alexander Bagwell. He had a great run at World Championship Wrestling, wants to come back, and just may. 
And now we're about to hear the reaction of Tito Santana, the former WWF tag team and intercontinental champion. He may be, however, the weak link in this team. It's really going to be interesting to see how that lack of experience with the Lucha Libre style will present itself during the match. It's going to make for a very interesting clash nonetheless. He always looks good. It's clear that he's dropped about 20 or 25 pounds since the time we last saw him. And now the reaction to Jerry Estrada, a mixture, a chorus of boos and cheers. The fans traditionally here in Los Angeles with a great response for both La Parca and Blue Panther. A mixed response tonight for La Parca, however. The Blue Panther, he's 34 years old now, but he's been in the ring for 16 years. That means he began at age 18. Five foot five, 190 pounds, very solid. Interestingly enough, he recently teamed with El Hijo del Santo and Pedro Aguayo to win the AAA Trios Cup. So he may be willing to be a technical or a rudo. I guess whatever works for him, Mike. A lot of interesting sidebars, as you mentioned. That's just one of them. We'll have to see how that plays out as the match gets underway. And there you go. La Parca and Jerry Estrada apparently having words right at the bell. The two teammates uh, shoving each other. Lou Panther is the Mexican middleweight champion. Very technically sound. He has held the world belt in many different weight divisions. We're supposed to have a six-man match here. And Estrada and La Parca can't seem to get it together. Lou Panther just wants to wrestle, and he's going to start against two cold Scorpio. This could be a sign of things to come during the match. Chris, we're really going to have to keep an eye on the team of Jerry Estrada, Lou Panther, and La Parca to see if they're able to put that team back together. And Mike, if we see two cold Scorpio doing extremely well with the Mexican style, it's only because he really began in Mexico before he became a star in the United States. He was in Mexico as a wrestler for many years, so he is very familiar with his style. You're not going to intimidate Two Cold Scorpio. You are correct. It's oh. in action in Mexico, as you mentioned. Actually, when Scorpio wrestled in Mexico, he wore a mask. I did not know that. Another interesting note. Both Benoit and Scorpio trained in New Japan dojos over in the Orient, so they have extensive backgrounds with the professional wrestling style internationally. Yeah, look at all the weight that Tito Santana has come off of. He's going to be very fast, I would imagine, tonight as a result of that. Lou Panther, as we said, is very technically sound as a mat wrestler. And in comes Chris Benoit, also, oh, La Parca who has a tremendous strut and arrogance and always plays to the crowd as he's doing right now. See, there you go. <laughs> There's no way to tell if he's got any muscles under the costume. As we mentioned for La Parca, quite a fan following despite his style. I think that people just love this costume. Great move there by La Parca and Chris Benoit very quickly tries to break it, and La Parca breaks that counter move. Benoit is, I think, as we said, considered by many one of the best, if not the best, professional wrestler in the world today simply because of the many styles that he excels at. Japanese style, American style, Mexican style, a one count, and very quickly, Benoit gets up. Pegasus Kid, very quiet outside the ring. He likes to express himself through his actions in the <laughs> ring. <laughs> Again, some psychological play there at work by La Parca. And in comes, for the first time, Tito Santana. And I don't know. Well, this is what we talked about earlier. You see Estrada and La Parca in a shoving match. And Estrada motioning for his partner to leave the ring. He wants to do battle with Tito Santana. This doesn't always indicate a whole lot of bad blood. Oh, a right. Not quite as good as George Foreman's last night, but it had some effect on Estrada. And now Tito Santana, who has always been in such tremendous condition, but again, it's ironic. He is of Mexican heritage, has not spent all his life in Mexico. However, the fact is, he should be accustomed to this style, but among his team, he may be the weak link. He is clearly, though, one of the most, if not the most powerful of the six men in the ring right now. The collar and elbow tie-up. And we do not see many moves held here, Mike, for very long. 
Santana, of course, a product of that great wrestling factory at West Texas State. The Funks, Dusty Rhodes, Brody Hansen, so many greats coming out of the West Texas area. Well, Estrada and Tito Santana, I don't think know quite what to make of one another, but my guess is at this point, Estrada is clearly dominating Santana simply because he's more familiar with his style and because he's faster. He's just plain faster. Well, La Parca says, I'm not really interested in tagging. Well, he's telling Estrada, you wanted this matchup with Santana, you fight him. I think the fans sometimes like to see dissension here. The Blue Panther, as you will see, is just staying out of things. And everybody says, well, I guess, are you guys going to go at it? This is odd. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, La Parca, I think, has a right at this point to say, what are you doing here? Estrada started it, and in comes the Blue Panther again without benefit of a tag, but that's okay in this style. Blue Panther and Benoit hook it up. Yeah, Panther, as tough as he is, I don't think, wants to exchange power moves with the Pegasus kid, Chris Benoit, who just twists right out of that move. Look how fast he is. Panther is known as, oh, what a backdrop. He's known as the father of this new wave group of Mexican stars, very respected among his peers for his mat work. And there is no over-the-top rope disqualification in Lucha Libre. If that were the case, most matches would end in about the first five minutes. Look at this. Chris Benoit is going to have to do something, and he does. He twists around. He gets a one count on Blue Panther, and that's it. Blue Panther, as we said, the Mexican middleweight champion. La Parca, the Mexican light heavyweight champion. And look at that move over the rope. As we mentioned earlier, oh, Benoit nailed him with a great dive. Tag team matches in AAA fought under captain's rules. Each team designating a captain before the matchup. Pegasus Kid, one of the captains, Blue Panther, the other. You saw them square off. You must, to win a fall, defeat either the captain of the team or two members of the team. And once defeated, you cannot interfere or you will be disqualified. What a tremendous showman Two Gold Scorpio is. And he is not going to be intimidated by La Parca at all, who makes a big mistake in turning his back to his opponent. And then Two Gold Scorpio does the very same thing. All right, they go to the ropes. And again, the football tackle, the attempted shoulder block to no effect. It rattles La Parca's bones, if you'll forgive the pun. Exchanging some rights there. Slap oh. this. The forearms, legal in Lucha Libre as well as in American style. The Irish whip and Scorpio comes out. We've seen that before in WCW. The hip lock takeover and the arm drag. And Scorpio misses by a long shot. And La Parca with a pushback. He misses as well. Scorpio is just as fast as La Parca, and that's saying a lot. La Parca tries to block it, but he does it. Oh, no he's claiming way. a low blow, but of course, referee Pepe Casas says no chance of that. We talked about uh, things that are automatic disqualifications in Lucha Libre, fouls, low blows, referee abuse, another cause for an automatic disqualification. One move that's banned in AAA, the pile driver. There have been some serious career-ending injuries. Chris, you actually sat in on a match with myself down in Mexico where a wrestler by the name of Angel Azteca was injured so severely he's had to retire. I'd never seen it before in my life, and I've been watching wrestling since I was nine years old. People were truly concerned whether he would ever walk again. And Jerry Estrada goes over. It looks like Tito Santana, Mike, is getting into the swing of things here. Look at that. He's using the ropes. Looks like he's not having a problem at all adapting to the style. I don't know if there is a strategy among this team that they claim low blows, and clearly low blows have not been administered. For the ropes, and Benoit is caught by the Blue Panther with a tremendous clothesline. It stops him in midair. Oh, almost a snap suplex there by Benoit. And that's a surprise that he recovered so quickly. However, he misses and misses big with that elbow. The Irish whip into the ropes. And look at the Blue Panther. As we said, just 5'5", five five, but he's 190 pounds. Estrada is explosive, and Benoit was wide open. 
And now the tag is made to LaParca, and he walks away. Well, no matter how this match ends, I think Estrada and La Parca will have something to talk about when things are all over. Uh, dissension reigns supreme here. You saw just as La Parca came in, he pushed the spin away. A spinning kick in midair. And Benoit, who came into this match with such a great reputation, is taking a tremendous beating. Well, Blue Panther comes in, and that's good because Benoit is so quick to recover. A great bridge there, and a clothesline with the left arm, which you do not see very often. In comes Two Cold Scorpio. Oh, he flies! From halfway across the ring, will he do it again? He does, and he misses. Oh, my! Blue Panther could have fallen up a little bit stronger. He just grabs Two Cold Scorpio into a standing side headlock. Oh, look at that. Two on one action here. LaParca comes right in with the kick to the leg of Scorpio. If you deal with Scorpio's legs, you have essentially taken out about 80% of his offense. Very strategic move there by LaParca. Just a one count there by the referee. This is the third match in what we have been told are five matches tonight. Scorpio recovers as well. We may have word on an added match here when worlds collide. What a power bomb by Scorpio. Well, that should be it if Tito can follow up. Estrada very oddly kicks La Parca, and La Parca trips Estrada. Further dissension on the team. Blue Panther has got to be... Well, he's wondering, what the heck am I doing with these two guys? Should we have talked before in the locker room? Should we have agreed to work as a team? We may actually see this six-man tag evolve into a single matchup between La Parca and Jerry Estrada. Well, we promised wrestling like you've never seen before, and so far we have delivered, and we have yet to see, of course, that mask versus hair match as well as the cage match. Mike, you see the cage above us here tonight, the tallest cage I have ever seen. What a double main event we have in store for the fans. Harold Aguayo and Conan, a chance to settle their grudge inside the confines of that huge steel cage. And also yet to come, double hair versus double mask. Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine putting their hair at stake against the terrific team of Santo and Octagon who put their masks on the line. Okay, here comes the high-flying maneuver of Chris Benoit. What will he do? Oh, it looked pretty, but he landed on the mat. The Blue Panther, as we said, the Mexican middleweight champion. He's been wrestling 16 years. The small package, one, two, and La Parca didn't need to come in. Blue Panther kicked out, but that's teamwork anyway. And very quickly, in comes Two Cold Scorpio, sensing that perhaps now is the time to pin the Blue Panther, and Scorpio misses as well. High risk move backfired for Scorpio. Let's see if the team of La Parca, Estrada, and Panther can set their differences to the side and take advantage. Here's an, here's an interesting hold. It almost looked like they were going for the makeup a wish. Well, it looked like the Parka had two gold pins, and Estrada wants the, the pin. The teammates doesn't want to allow his other teammate to make the cover. The fans here are stunned. They can't believe what's happening. All right, now it's a full-fledged battle, and I guess the fans want to see it. If you guys are going to disagree, if you can't be on the same team, then go ahead. And two gold Scorpio says go to it as well. Well, I think they realize for the sake of the team that they have got to let cooler heads prevail here and Scorpio went up high with those springs in his legs and he was caught by the Blue Panther as we said to both Scorpio fans of world championship wrestling know him as the one half of the former world tag team champion Benoit with a clothesline over the top rope and once again we remind you fans that there is no over the top rope disqualification Tito Santana the biggest man in the ring with a version of a clothesline I guess there on Estrada who lands on his feet he's got the full Nelson on Tito Santana now we've got La Parca. Let's see what happens here. Estrada's got him off. Got Santana on the floor. La Parca is in the middle of the ring. La Parca is going to dive on Santana. This is going to be he it. Goes. He's getting up some speed. And Santana moves. 
and La Parker goes right into Estrada, who's not going to be happy about that at all. All right, here it is. And Santana, unfortunately, got clocked by his own teammate. I'm not sure if that's going to matter at all. Meanwhile, in the ring, Blue Panther and Benoit. What a power slam by Blue. All right, he's on the third rope. This is going to be it if he connects, and he doesn't. Still outside the ring, La Parca and Jerry Estrada. And Benoit on the second rope. He drops the leg. He should go for the pin. He does, but he doesn't hook the leg. He gets just a two count on the Blue Panther. These are the two captains of this matchup in the ring. Oh, he turns it into a power bomb. In comes two cold Scorpio to break it up. What a save by Scorpio just at the last second. And again, Scorpio has a tremendous amount of experience with the Lucha Libre style. Benoit breaks up that power slam. One, two, and three. They've won it. it. As we mentioned, they are the two captains. As a result, this matchup is over. Chris Benoit with the pinfall victory over Blue Panther, leading the team of the Pegasus Kid, Tito Santana, and two Colt Scorpio to victory. That is match three of five we are scheduled to see tonight. Again, fans, we are trying to get word on if we will see a sixth match tonight. But it looks like we could have number six right here. Let's stay with the action. Well, we talked earlier about this thing possibly disintegrating into a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And now the former partners almost, it looks like at this point, La Parca and Jerry Estrada, their team coming out on the losing end. And now they really want to have their differences out. I'll tell you, Mike, just looking, just looking at that imposing mask uh, and, and costumes, it, it just, to look at this guy, La Parca, makes you want to run. And Estrada, who is a brawler, who is not a, a pretty guy by any means, either in terms of his looks or his wrestling abilities, but gets the job done, doesn't back away from La Parca. Apparently, believe now is not the time. A special hello to Michael Charles Field, the tiny tipper. He's the world's youngest luchador, no just seven Yo no months old. Pasa, He's watching in Massachusetts. No we are live and exclusively on pay-per-view throughout the world. Thousands here at the LA Sports Arena. Millions throughout the world watching on pay-per-view in Spanish and in English. Chris, as you mentioned, terrific crowd on hand at the historic L.A. Sports Arena. La Parca makes his way back to the ring, while Blue Panther stays in the ring to acknowledge the cheers from the crowd. Also watching tonight, Mike Vicky Contavespi from Forbes Magazine. Everyone in Kernersville, North Carolina. And time to remind you that coming up, the Clash of the Champions, live on TBS Wednesday night, November 16th at 8.05 p.m. Eastern, 505 here on the West Coast, the Butcher, Avalanche, and Kevin Sullivan, now known as the Three Faces of Fear, face Dave Sullivan, Hulk Hogan, and Sting. Yet to come in our broadcast this evening, the double main event. You're talking about a tag team match with two wrestlers putting their masks on the line. All right, that's coming up in a minute. If I can interrupt you, Mike, just a moment. We're being told now some news coming up about Starcade live and exclusively on pay-per-view December 27th from World Championship Wrestling. his former blood brother, the immortal Hulk Hogan, with a world title on the line. And more, WCW Starcade 94, Triple Threat. And fans, be sure to watch for the information coming up about Starcade. My guess is it's going to involve Hulk Hogan. It is not. Many people, unfortunately, think it's not going to involve Ric Flair. One of the first big events here from World Championship Wrestling to not involve Ric Flair, who was retired by Hulk Hogan. Okay, this is the double hair versus double mask match. That is what is scheduled right now. Ejo Del Santo and Octagon against Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine, and there he is. There they are, the Triple A World Tag Team Champion, Eddie Guerrero from that famous Guerrero Wrestling Dynasty. His tag team partner, Art Barr, better known in Triple A as Blood Machine. They put their hair and shape tonight, but they have a chance, as they beat Santo and Octagon, to really end the careers of their opponents. Should Santo and Octagon lose this match up tonight, they can never wrestle again with their Mexico 
in wrestling history. He is the son of El Santo, Mexico's most famous, most revered wrestler. Elio Del Santo debuted in October 1982. Like his father, he also stars in movies in Mexico. He is risking, as we said, the most famous man in all of wrestling against these guys, Eddie Guerrero and Art Bar, who we're watching right now, the love machine, the current AAA World Tag Team Champions. They beat Santo and Octagon for those belts in Chicago. And Mike, some speculate that one of the referees in the match was paid off by Eddie Guerrero. No doubt about it, and that referee is Tarantes, the official that you see in the ring with the suspenders. There was a fast count. There was money that did exchange hands in the ring. What role will Tarantes play in tonight's big matchup? And there is Elijo Del Santo and Octagon. As we said, Elijo Del Santo risking the most famous mask in all of wrestling. When his father died in the 80s, shortly before El Santo's death, Elijo Del Santo promised him that he would never lose the mask. Losing the mask, the ultimate humiliation, a real blow to one machismo. Octagon is a lawyer by trade, oddly, oddly enough. He sells Mike more merchandise by far than any other wrestler in Mexico. He's a martial arts expert with an emphasis on judo. And if, if we can get a shot at some point of the crowd, we will see a lot of octagon masks out there. Let's also talk about the seconds involved in this match. For the team of Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine, they have Madonna's boyfriend in their corner. Madonna's boyfriend, of course, uh, is part of that Gringos Locos connection. A second for the team of Santo and Octagon will be Blue Panther, who we just saw in the match previously. We'll see what role the seconds play in addition to that of the officials. El Hijo del Santo means the son of the saint. Now, Eddie Guerrero is the son of Gory Guerrero, who also fathered three more sons who are wrestlers. Eddie Guerrero was born in Mexico, now lives in El Paso, Texas, and wears the American colors red, white, and blue. As you can hear, that really infuriates the Mexican fans. Mike, as you know, he has been taunting El Hijo del Santo recently, claiming that it was his father, Gory, who was the real star of that famous tag team that he formed with the now dead El Santo. They were called the Atomic Pair, and clearly that is not the case. El Santo more than carried his weight. Interesting to note, earlier today on my national radio show, Love Machine and Eddie Guerrero were my guests, and that jealousy to this day still exists. They talked about the fact that Santo and Eddie Guerrero, Hijo del Santo and Eddie Guerrero, were tag team partners. But Eddie Guerrero admitted he was playing second fiddle to Santo, much like his father, Gory Guerrero, in his eyes, played second fiddle to the original El Santo. And that jealousy broke them apart. The cheers, perhaps I should say, the taunts of the fans, and Eddie Guerrero and Art Machine Love Bar are walking out. The fans pick up that chant of Mexico, Mexico, and that drives Love Machine and Eddie Guerrero crazy. Well, you saw that swimming motion. That is a taunt by Love Machine Art Bar uh, on the Mexicans, intimating that the only way they can get to America is to swim the river. There is a real visceral hatred for Love Machine Art Bar in Mexico. It's always a security risk whenever he wrestles in Mexico. And right now, he is wrestling live here at the Los Angeles Sports Arena. His hair is on the line. Eddie Guerrero's hair is on the line. The masks of Octagon and El Hijo Del Santo are on the line as well. Chris, I think we should point out, following the first three matchups, which were all one fall, this bout will be two out of three falls. At this point, we are told there is a 30-minute time limit they do have the latitude to extend that time limit, however. Hijo Del Santo, quickly with an arm drag on Eddie Guerrero. Now the chance of Santo, Santo. You hear Cayate, that means shut up in Spanish, and that's about the only Spanish word that Love Machine Art Bar knows. Three of these four wrestlers are second generation. Only Octagon is not. An on bar by Eddie Guerrero now on El Hijo del Santo. Recently completed a movie in Mexico. We also have a television star 
who is on the card tonight, the hated Conan, who is a star of a Mexican, very popular Mexican soap opera. We've got a story to tell you about that, fans, a little bit later in the night. A reverse chin lock, and Elio Del Santo powers out of it. To try and put in perspective. Oh. Elio Del Santo hangs on, and out goes Eddie Guerrero. The legendary status of El Santo. In the ring, you see Hijo Del Santo, the son. His father starred as a lead in 44 movies and wrestled for 41 years. Good night. When he died, it was the largest funeral ever in Mexico, and Santo was buried in that mask, as you mentioned. When I first heard that, I was stunned, and I think that's an indication of just how truly sacred, you don't want to be sacrilegious here, but how truly sacred that mask is in Mexico. We see Octagon now in Love Machine, and Love Machine tries to take over with the boot. Octagon is not the biggest, but he really knows how to use his opponent's speed and momentum. Look at that against them. He learned that in judo. And again, Octagon knows exactly what he's doing in the ring. And Art Bar does not look like he knows what's doing, what he's doing. A missed close line. Octagon did not miss. Oh! Octagon is out, and quickly in comes Eli Del Santo. Octagon, Earl Harvard by Eddie Guerrero. This match, two out of three falls. Mask, double mask, I beg your pardon, versus double hair. Look out, El Santo is up, and can Eddie Guerrero get up as well? Oh, look at that! Frankensteiner from off the top. That's it, one, two, and three. Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine Art Bar just that quickly have won this first ball. Well, now they continue. You've got to be two men here, apparently, to win the fall. And you see Eddie Guerrero and Octagon setting up in the corner. Superflex. And look at Love Machine. He's screaming this from the third rope. He's famous for this splash. Oh, my. One, two, and three. Now the fall is over. And he derisively says to the crowd, that's made in America. There is such, as we said, visceral hatred toward Love Machine Art Bar. In comes the Blue Panther to see what he can do, if anything, to make Octagon feel better. Well, we are now just one fall away from seeing the identities of Santo and Octagon. There's a good look at one of the thousands of octagon masks that you will see in just about any Lucha Libre card. Chris, we talked about this earlier when you went to Mexico with me. In the United States, the souvenirs I think that most fans go after when they go to a live show are t-shirts. When you go to Mexico, there are no t-shirts available to purchase at the souvenir stands. However, they have the replica masks. Let's take a look at the slow-mo from the first fall. Unbelievable elevation. Ah. What a splash off the top. Love Machine nailing Octagon for the three count. All right, some commotion out in the crowd as we see Love Machine putting the bad mouth on Octagon. It has moved so quickly here tonight already, Mike. This is the fourth match of a scheduled five matches. Again, reports from the back that there may be an unscheduled match, and who knows, it could be Cherry Estrada against La Parca. Anything is liable to happen with AAA and IWC present when worlds collide. We're live on pay-per-view from the Los Angeles Sports Arena. And also live Wednesday night on TBS, November 16th, 8.05 p.m. Eastern, 5.05 here on the West Coast. The six-man main event, the Butcher, Avalanche, and Kevin Sullivan. The three faces of fear against Dave Sullivan, Hulk Hogan, and Sting. As Eddie Guerrero goes right back to work on El Hijo Del Santo. Look at that move. He quickly goes for the pin. The mask at risk. A two count. I don't know, Mike, if I want to be in the L.A. Sports Arena, if El Hijo Del Santo has to unmask. And there must and will be a winner in this matchup. Now, previously in Mexico, if this kind of a match were to end in a draw or a double count out, it would lead to either two haircuts and two unmaskings. All right, and now Eddie Guerrero says, let's slow the pace down here. Perhaps he needs a breather, or perhaps he knows that Octagon is furious. 
Look at the red, white, and blue, the tights of Guerrero and Love Machine. What's Guerrero got to do? A poke in the eyes. An octagon knows too much about pro wrestling to have fallen for that. A slap there by the arrogant Love Machine. You mentioned the martial arts background of octagon. He's a big fan of Chuck Norris, hence the octagon name after the Chuck Norris movie. Oh, a standing drop kick there by Love Machine, who kind of does a kip up. There is a sense, Mike, that everything Love Machine does is intended not only to hurt and humiliate his opponents, but to infuriate the crowd as well. Look at Guerrero. He caught Octagon with just the back of his head. Well, Santo is headed off, and I don't blame him. The Irish whip. High back body drop, and Guerrero lands securely on the mat. Well, the offense has been one-sided to this point. Oh. Let's see if Santo and Octagon can turn it around. Santo and Octagon are great individual wrestlers, and they have teamed before, and that teamwork is coming into play right now. Eddie Guerrero with the Irish whip on Santo. Tremendous head scissors, and Guerrero runs right into a left by Octagon. A double drop kick, and Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine go out. Miscommunication there. Oh, double dive. And tremendous communication there on the team, by the team of Octagon and Santo. And Blue Panther is loving every minute of it. Santo and Octagon with a terrific double suicide dive. And the team of the Gringos Locos, Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine, go right into those steel guardrails. Well, right now he's got hair. If he doesn't do something about the way this match is going, he's going to be bald before the night is over. All right, there's Eddie Guerrero, about to be pinned, I would say, by El Santo. No, just a two count. Keep in mind, again, that Guerrero has insulted El Santo, the father of El Hijo del Santo. This is very personal here tonight, live at the L.A. Sports Arena. A Frankensteiner off the top. Goes for the pin. One, two, and three. They've just pinned Santo. That the match is not over. Remember, they must defeat two men to win the fall. They're halfway there. They have to defeat Octagon to win this fall. And they want Octagon in there. They don't want to lose their hair. But again, as I said, they're just one three count away from seeing Santo and Octagon unmasked. And now Santo cannot interfere here. Santo has been pinned. He is essentially out of this match. A double clothesline. That's made in America. That's made in America. And at this point, it looks like Santo and Octagon are, learning, are going to lose their masks. I can't believe it. Octagon. The judo, the martial arts expert, is digging in. Oh, my, what a move. The series of Frankensteiners gets the one, two, and three. Octagon is pinned Eddie Guerrero. The Russian side suplex. And he was in up for gives up. The fans are on their feet. What a comeback by Octagon. It's tied up at one and one. I think the fans are on their feet as much as for, for relief as happiness, Mike. Well, just when it looked like Santo and Octagon were on the verge of defeat, Octagon regrouped on the arena floor. He talked with Blue Panther, the second, and he revived and came into the ring and pulled it off for the team to even it up at one fall apiece. We're headed to a decisive third fall. The loser of this third fall will either unmask or have their heads shaved. Well, Love Machine and Eddie Guerrero thought they had headed one. They thought they would leave tonight definitely with their hair. They still may. They still may because at this point, Octagon and El Santo look the worst for wear. Keep in mind now, Love Machine, Art Barr, and Eddie Guerrero are the, Mex the AAA World Tag Team Champions, having defeated this very team in Chicago this past July. Mike, let's look at this again. You see Octagon, he got his respite on the ring floor. 
He comes back. Love Machine thinks that he's just thrown him away with a back body drop, but Octagon reverses and gets the three count on Eddie Guerrero. Love Machine turns around, and Octagon with the side Russian leg sweep and forms a submission hold out of that. And there it is, the signal in to submit by Tarantes, and Love Machine gives up. We're one fall apiece. We're headed to that decisive third fall. All right, two out of three falls. At this point, we are told this is still a 30-minute time limit. A double mask versus double hair match. Yet to come, of course, our main event in the highest let's kick steel up. cage ever. Let's do it for the United States. Let's, let's do it for the United States. You can hear the strategy on the part of the Gringos logos. And Will you look Machine up? tries to give a pep talk to his tag partner, Eddie Guerrero. Love Machine said those uh, three very divisive numbers, 187. He's referring to Proposition 187. That is considered here in California to be anti-immigrant, anti-Mexico, and as a result, anybody proposing the passage of Proposition 187 will not, I can assure you, get the cheers of the Mexican fans. This could be it. One, two. Oh, no. Love Machine breaks it up. That could have been it. A oh. That both men, both participants, both members of the team must be pinned by the opposing team in order to win the match. All right, now a version of a camel clutch there. And what is low? Oh, what a kick to the back of the head of Santo. Santo's favorite finishing hold, much like his father, the camel clutch. It appears at this point he's trying to work on the back and the neck of Eddie Guerrero to soften him up. El Santo, perhaps one of the smaller superstars in Mexican wrestling. One, two, and a two count. But he continues, unfortunately, Mike, to try to pin Love Machine and or Eddie Guerrero too close to their corner. And we've seen this as a submission hold before. Look at Octagon. Look at him. Look at him get set. He knows exactly. It's a punt. He knew exactly what he was going to do. Oh, another one. Savat kicks. That's that martial arts background that we talked about earlier, and it comes into play now. The double Irish whip, the double elbow, and down goes Art Bar. The action has slowed down noticeably here because we have had two grueling falls so far. This, the third and final fall. This will determine whether the mask come off or the hair is shaven off. And again, the Savat kick of Octagon. Well, a headbutt that hurt them both. And Corey Guerrero, well, it's effective. Not very classy, but it works. It looked like Eddie was trying for the power bomb there. Now he's got him over and he's going to stretch him. And in comes just barely El Santo, who just grabs a hold of Guerrero and kicks. Unneal him. ago the fans here at the LA Sports Arena who have jam-packed this 18,000 seat venue were on their feet after El Santo and Octagon beat Love Machine and Eddie Guerrero for the second fall. This is now the third and deciding fall. Oh no! A drop from on high. This could be it. We get the one and that's it. Eddie Guerrero had been sidelined recently with arm and shoulder injuries at the hands of Santo, and that move off the top rope may have been done by Santo to try and take advantage and further weaken that shoulder and arm. Now the double dive for the rope by the AAA World Tag Team Champions to mix effect. Octagon got it from Love Machine up far. It looks like El Hijo del Santo was able to move out a little bit out of the way. And now the seconds are having words. You see Blue Panther and Madonna's boyfriend. This is the first big event for Luis Piccoli, Madonna's boyfriend, here in AAA. And he wants to make a name for himself. He's been on the winning team already earlier tonight here, live on pay-per-view. 
This could be a superplex. Elijo Del Santo is up. He's blocked it. He has blocked it with that left leg. And he jumps. Eddie Guerrero. Oh, no. El Santo is in position. Guerrero was able to hold on. Look at that. Over the top. Sunset flipped him onto the floor. Great recovery by Eddie. And in the ring, Octagon up against Love Machine Art Bar. And he misses that kick. Well, we've got a... Oh! There's that move. And Tarantes was not there. Oh. Octagon has been beaten. We're one pin or one submission away. Octagon will not be able to get up. He's out of it. That is the single most devastating move in Lucha Libre. We talked about it earlier. That hold has been outlawed, banned. The referee, Tarantes, had his back to the action. And now it is essentially Chris Santo. This could be it. Santo, if he doesn't make a comeback, both he and Octagon will have to unmask. Well, a clothesline there coming up. And now a bridge. This is it. This is it. Here comes the one, and a two, and a kick out. Most of the fans are on their feet. They have never seen El Santo or Elijo Del Santo unmasked. Love Machine headed to the top rope. We know what this is all about. That super splash off the top. This is Antonio Pena, the head of AAA, coming to ringside to check on Octagon. A tremendous look of concern there on the face of Antonio Pena. Who knows how important Octagon is to this promotion. This is it. Uh, Guerrero with the superplex on Santo, and here's the big splash. Uh -oh. It's it. One, two, and three. How did he kick out? Well, we've got some medical attention now being given to Octagon. Is there a stretcher? That's what we need, apparently, right now is a stretcher. Chris Octagon isn't moving. We talked about this earlier. There this is, is the reason that the pile driver has been banned. As great a wrestler as Elio Del Santo is, he cannot defeat on his own the AAA yeah. World Tag Team Champion. Uh, against all odds here in this two-on-one situation. He's stuck. El Santo is stuck. A drop kick right into the throat of the love machine. The Santo dive off the top all the way to the floor. Can there be two miracles in one night? We saw Octagon with the unbelievable comeback to win the second fall. Blue Panthers in the ring. Pile driver. Oh, and he nailed Love Machine. And the referee out of Come position. On, didn't see it. We've got to look there at Octagon. That's what happened Listen when Octagon got out. Pile driver. You're right. Listen to this crowd. This is out of control. Pin him. It's one. It's two. And three. He still has to beat Eddie Guerrero. But now it's one on one. Elio Del Santo. But can he deal with Eddie Guerrero? Even one on one. Is he in any condition? Eddie checking on his tag team partner. And now Madonna's boyfriend in the ring to tell Toronto that he missed it. He missed the pile driver as Blue Panther came from ringside and nailed Love Machine with that pile driver. Now the paramedics, the county paramedics, are checking over. One, two. A two count on Eddie Guerrero. A half a second away. We thought it was over. And so did, I think, a lot of the fans here think it was over. Tremendous concern now. A power bomb. That's going to be it. One, two. And a kick out by Ali Del Santo. Santo, Santo. There is a feeling now at this point, Mike, that this has a possibility of getting totally out of control. Anything can happen here, and Guerrero sets up Santo on the top rope. Another superplex try coming up. Oh. A belly to belly suplex? Could that be it? One, two, and three. No. Belly to belly superplex off the top. I beg your pardon, you're right. It was a belly-to-belly -belly superplex, and there you see Love Machine Art Bar, who has been laid out by the Blue Panther. Octagon is not moving, nor is Love Machine Art. Although the, the, the paramedics are calling, oh! 
of Frankensteiner check, on the top rope. Check, 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 One, check, check, two, and no! The paramedics calling for a neck brace for Octagon. True concern, as you can see, in the paramedics at ringside. The cheers of Santo, 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 reverberating throughout the jam-packed 18,000-seat L.A. Sports Arena. The full Nelson of five into a bridge. He's got him one. He's got two. And Santo kicks out. Possibly you can hear it. We hear it over the ring mic. As Love Machine wakes up after the pile driver, he says, where am I? He's dazed. He's confused. Well, Santo gets out of the full Nelson. He's got one. He's got two. He's got three. That's it. The masks have been saved. And the hair of Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine, Art Bar, will be saved tonight. Live right here on pay-per-view. Two miracle comebacks. Octagon in the second fall. Santo in the third fall. Against all odds, they come back to pull it off. Well, apparently, Octagon is not able to make it out into his own power. Here come the paramedics. And as we said, the promoter Antonio Pena, he's right there on the right. They're putting him from the stretcher onto the gurney now. Great camera shot there of a fan wearing Octagon mask. Another fan having great concern. It is unfortunate that Octagon cannot see that the hair is being shaved. Almost a mixed response from the crowd. Obviously, they went nuts with cheers for Santo, but at the same time, the concern for Octagon. We saw in Tijuana just a month or so ago a wrestler by the name of Angel Azteca who was paralyzed and had to retire from professional wrestling because of the pile driver. We surely hope that the results won't be the same for Octagon. All right, there you see the Camry Cruiser following Octagon all the way out. And we will be in touch with the hospital to see what we can do to get a report for you on the condition of Octagon. Love Machine Art Bar, however, who also suffered a pile driver, apparently is up. He's on his hands and knees right now in the ring as the camera goes outside. Octagon being placed from the gurney. There's an ambulance, of course, backstage at these events. And the ambulance has, uh, has arrived on the scene, and Octagon is being uh, put into the ambulance by the paramedics. And the paramedics says, no mueve las brazos. That means don't move your arms. There may be a serious neck injury. This may be the last time we will have seen Octagon as a wrestler. Our hopes, our best wishes are with him, as well as the uh, stunning news of Ronald Reagan saying that he is suffering from Alzheimer's disease. That has struck California, as well as the tremendous negative campaign advertising here. We are forgetting that tonight, however, with this tremendous victory in the double hair versus double mask match. All that is set aside, and good has triumphed over evil. Santo with the Mexican flag in the ring as he and Blue Panther celebrate. And Chris Cruz, it's time for a couple of haircuts. There's no getting out of it. There is no getting out of it, and Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine Art Bar know what they've got to do. There is a tremendously powerful authority in Mexico over Lucha Libre. Once a stipulation occurs, you do not back out of it. Your career could be over. Eddie Guerrero says the love machine just cut my hair already and get it over with. Madonna's boyfriend is furious. My guess is if it's like other hair cuttings that I've seen before in the ring, we're going to see some of the fans try to get some of that hair. That's kind of a souvenir. El Santo is motioning to the crowd now as we look at the haircut being administered by Art Bar on Eddie Guerrero. All right, that's what El Santo wanted, the mask of Octagon. Chris Cruz, as far as Love Machine Art Bar and Eddie Guerrero are concerned, this is the ultimate bad hair day. <laughs> and the ultimate humiliation as well. If we're talking ultimate. And El Santo himself oh, grabs some of the hair. 
And can you blame him? A tremendous comeback for El Santo. We thought it was all over. And we're going to first, my guess is, see the scissor work of Love Machine Art Bar. And then the exchange are, of scissors. Are we going to see the shaved head or just the haircut? We'll have to see what happens next. But, of course, Eddie Guerrero now going to take the scissors to the long locks of the Love Machine. Look at that. That's a couple of years growth. I could use some of that hair. <laughs> What's so funny? We both could. They may be tears, or it may be sweat. My guess is a combination of both. Okay, El Santo is going outside the ring. He is handing out some hair. He already handed out some hair to some of the fans. Santo ran around ringside, presenting that hair to the fans sitting in the front row. Still to come, of course, the story of the ultimate betrayal or main event. It's Conan against Edo Aguayo. What we have just seen is a double hair versus double mask match. And what has happened is the masked wrestlers have won. Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine Art Bar are having their hair cut. And in fact, they're cutting one another's hair, I guess, in a show of, I don't know, unity? We hope to have an update on the condition of Octagon. Carried from the ring on a stretcher, placed on a gurney. As you saw, went to the ambulance. He's on his way to the hospital. We expect an update on Octagon. Indeed we do. Now it looks like there may be some dissension among the Gringos Locos. Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine. I think at this point the reality has finally set in and the two realize exactly what has happened. Love Machine on bar with tremendous dives off the top rope. We have never seen anybody essentially pump their legs and land on their opponents like that. But it was to no avail. They won the first fall. They lost the second fall. And then Art Barr, that man right there, with a pile driver on Octagon who was carried out from the ring in a stretcher. Art Barr is furious. Of course, at that point, we saw the second Blue Panther who came from the corner of Santo and Octagon. He came to the ring and nailed Love Machine with a pile driver of his own, sort of to even the score. What would we have done without Blue Panther there in the second? Both Octagon and El Hijo del Santo. Well, I know what it translates, but he's saying, I don't think he's saying hi, Mom. I don't think he's saying, gee, I should have won. He's probably thinking of Colin Sice Farland. He goes to the crowd of Mexicans and Mexican wrestling fans who he really hates. And that hate is hatred is reciprocated. Eddie Guerrero looks like a beaten man. And indeed he is suffering the cons of the fans here. As we said, Eddie Guerrero living in El Paso, Texas. He wears the red, white, and blue of the United States of America. But he was born in Mexico. And the fans in Mexico resent that deeply. I'm Chris Cruz. Mike today is with me here. We are at ringside. Mike today is now making his way to the ring. And he is going to be discussing inside the ring the main event. As we said, a story of the ultimate betrayal here in Lucha Libre. Conan, the much-loved Conan, taking on Pedro Aguayo. Let us tell you very briefly what is going to happen in this cage match. What's going to happen is the cage is going to be lowered from on high. It is already constructed. The only way to win is to go over the cage and down to the floor, el piso, as they call it in Spanish, down to the floor, and then, and only then, will the referee raise the victor's hand. It has been a tremendous night so far. Four matches out of the five scheduled. The mini Super Estrellas, Espectrito and Girito Estrada, defeated by Mascarita Sagrada and Octagon Cito. Psicosis, Madonna's boyfriend, and Fuerza Guerrera were victorious over Rey Mysterio Jr. 
heavy metal and a Latin lover. Rey Mysterio Jr. is somebody that we will be watching for about, I believe, the next 20, possibly 30 years. He is only 19 years old, won his first championship when he was 17 years old. The national welterweight title, becoming the youngest, ch youngest champion in the history of Lucha Libre. We're about to go to the ring, Mike Tenay and Victor Rivera. Or, I bet, yeah, it is Victor Rivera who's in the ring. He is considered a Rudo announcer. That's him on the left. Rivera. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now minutes away from our main event. Former friends, former tag team partners, Conan and Perro Aguayo, now bitter rivals. The steel cage is about to come down. Let's get it on. Here's the voice of AAA, Arturo Rivera. Thank you. Y hoy estamos ante la proximidad del evento grande. Una rivalidad que nació aquí en la anterior función y que hoy dos hombres van a dirimir en una caula en la lucha del orgullo. Cuando los mundos chocan, Conan y Perro Aguayo. The steel cage match, and we are minutes away from that steel cage being lowered. Pero Aguayo, 49 years old. He's from Mexico. He has lost his hair to Conan in previous matches, but Conan has lost his mask to Aguayo. They have been friends, and they have been enemies, and now they are truly enemies. Pero Aguayo, the everyman who never gives up, a Mexican arm wrestling champion in the 1960s, in 1975, he became the NWA World Middleweight Champion. Hang on. We're seeing that on the video wall as well as on our screen. Video of Eddie Guerrero's head being shaved. He is going to be shaved bald. Pedro Aguayo has held eight other world championships in various weight classes. Extremely well known in Japan and Puerto Rico as well as, of course, in Mexico. All right, and the cage is now being lowered to dramatic effect. Mike today back with us now here at ringside, and Mike, here comes that 10, 12-foot-high steel cage. It's the highest I have ever seen in pro wrestling. And an awesome pyrotechnic display to go along with it. This cage is just incredible, as you mentioned, when it comes to size, Chris. This cage is much bigger than any cage I've ever seen used before in professional wrestling. What a monster. This match is being promoted in Spanish speaking areas as La Amistad ha terminado. La guerra empieza. The friendship has ended and the war begins. What a background these two wrestlers have, Chris. You're talking about Conan and Perro Aguayo. For years, these, these men teamed up. Longtime friends, longtime tag team partners in August of this year. Conan snapped. He turned on Perro Aguayo. This is the chance to settle that grudge, settle that score. The cage has been put into place, and we're ready for the main event. Sad thing is, Mike, Conan, at one time, the most popular wrestler in Mexico. The biggest gate attraction, possibly, in the 61, 62-year history of Lucha Libre. He is a Cuban refugee, born in Cuba, raised in Florida, in Miami. And at the age of 17, a member of the U.S. Navy boxing team, without a doubt, the strongest wrestler on the card tonight, has recently released a CD. He appears frequently on a Mexican soap opera, and I know you've got a story to tell about that. Yeah, interesting to note, we were down in uh, Tijuana, Mexico. We went to a live AAA event. We walked into a restaurant just hours before that card, and you see Conan makes his way to the ring. As we were in the restaurant, a soap opera was on television. As soon as Conan appeared on the screen during that soap opera, it was almost like time stood still. The cooks came out of the back. The waitresses stopped everything they were doing and went right to the TV set and watched every minute that Conan was on the screen. And our food got cold. <laughs> As we said, he is a frequent uh, guest on a popular Mexican soap opera. He is Mexico's top gate attraction. He has sold out this building before, and recently sold out a 50,000-seat bull ring. Mike, 
What are those two belts that Conan is bringing to the ring tonight? Conan right now is the holder of the IWC World Heavyweight Championship. He also recently defeated Perro Aguayo in a match in Mexico to gain the UWA Double Power Cup. And those are the two belts that he brings to the ring. Conan is called the Barbaro. He's 29 years old. And as we said, Perro Aguayo, 49 years old. Interesting story on how he arrived at that name. When he first began his wrestling career, Conan was known as El Centurion. But the ring announcer took one look at him and said, you look more like Conan the Barbarian. Hence the name change. Great story. Interesting parallels here somewhat in the Hogan Flair matchup. Clearly the two most popular wrestlers uh, in Lucha Libre today. It is easy to draw those parallels. Uh, of course, Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan just having the big matchup a couple of weeks ago. In Conan and Perro Aguayo, you have the two biggest draws in the country of Mexico. Of course, this match being a cage match, and because of the danger of this cage match, careers could be at stake. Here's the legend. It's going to be interesting to see whether Carol Aguayo can pull off sort of a George Foreman-esque type performance tonight. Well, if he does, it'll be parallel to what I believe George Foreman was thinking. He was the only one, probably, who thought that he could pull off that upset. Oh, legend in Mexico, Carol Aguayo, 24 years as a pro. He's known as the dog. Nochezuan, that's a city in Zacatecas, Mexico, and he comes to the ring complete with his trademark, those furry boots. His first name, Perro, actually means dog in Spanish. He has held in that very lengthy 24-year career over two dozen world titles. The average fan, I think, when they take a look at Perro Aguayo, they relate to that never say die attitude that he brings with the ring. What a heart this guy has. And Conan, as you can see from that camera shot, high above here in Los Angeles at the sports arena, already climbing to the top. Some interesting history between these two. In March of 1991, Conan was wrestling at that time with a mask. He lost his mask to Perro Aguayo. However, he gained revenge and Perro's hair some six months later in September of 91. They formed a tag team in 92. They're now bitter enemies, bitter rivals. The split up coming just a couple of months ago. Behind the scenes, these two had saved each other's hides for the last two years. And I think it finally came to a head where Conan decided he wasn't going to do that. He snapped and nailed Perro with a power bomb in a match just a couple of months ago. And the two have been feuding ever since. I think that's a good point, Mike, especially the use of the word snap. There is the sense that Conan is out of control. And can a man like Pedro Aguayo, who is 20 years older than Conan, possibly deal with this huge man, this the strongest wrestler possibly in Mexico? All right, they are locked in there. No referee, virtually no rules. Here's the key. Who can get out of the steel cage first? There's the power of Conan coming into play very early. Yes, Chris, to win this match, you must climb the cage all the way over the top, down the outside of the cage. The first one to touch the floor will be victorious. Conan is the IWC World Heavyweight Champion. That championship is not on the line tonight, however. Some might say honor, something much more important than any championship is on the line. And Harold Guayo is up very quickly. <laughs> Conan, Conan is looking for the door. The door is essentially locked. And look at Aguayo. He's laying in the left and right for the big man. Let's snap there out of the corner. <laughs> Well, there was a, uh, a count there. I'm not quite sure to what effect that will be. Perhaps a psychological boost 
for the uh, person who, for the wrestler who gets the count on the other. Fans of World Championship Wrestling might remember back in December of 1990 that Conan was a part of the Pat O'Connor Memorial Tag Team Tournament yes. at WCW Starcade Pay-Per-View. And did very well. Made it to the semifinals, I believe. Well, interestingly enough, Perro Flyo is maybe using Conan literally as a stepping stone to get up and over the cage. Look at that. He's going for the cage just a few minutes into the match. This is the one we have been waiting for. It's wrestling like you have never seen before. This breathtaking action we've been bringing you all night, live and exclusively here on pay-per-view. I'm Chris Cruz from World Championship Wrestling alongside Mike Today, who joins me at the Clash of Champions and our pay-per-view exclusively on the 900 line. And Pero Aguayo is nowhere near the top of the cage now, Mike. Conan has been such a big draw with the AAA promotion. Chris, back in April of 1993, over 50,000 fans turned out at the Plaza de Toros Bullring in Mexico City for an event called Triple Mania. On that card, Conan wrestled Cien Cruz. Uh, unbelievable move there by Conan, and Peril goes head first right under the ropes and into the steel cage. Yeah, not just into the ropes, you're right, Mike, but a steel cage as well. Now the Irish whip. And Conan tries it again. Oh, he succeeds. Yeah, drove him face first right into the steel mesh. And even though the mesh gives a little, it's still steel. We're still talking about a cage here, and there are some supporting barriers here. Look out. All right, the blood is beginning to flow just a few minutes into this match. Oh, Look at that. Carol's been opened up. You can see now the blood dripping down his forehead. Oh, oh. Conan goes right to work with two vicious chops to the chest. Conan literally does smell blood. Once this guy gets his opponent bleeding or gets his opponent in a difficult position, he is relentless. He will not give up. Oh, yuck. Ah, oh, man. Tremendous camera work. They're lucky they're not inside. They're close enough to the action now. A permanent imprint of his cage may be on Pedro Aguayo's forehead. And look at Conan putting all his weight with the foot to the back of the head as well as using the ropes. We talked earlier about the huge heart that Pedro Aguayo has. He's going to need it to mount any kind of a comeback here, and Conan heads for the top of the cage. Well, I thought this could be it, but already Pedro Aguayo is up. But he's still bloody, and Conan was flat back. Now Aguayo is getting his second win, even though he is, his face is coated with blood. I'm not sure if he connected or if Conan just backed off out of it. Dropkick almost knocked Conan off balance, it looked like. And now Aguayo goes for a pin. I'm not sure to what effect. The referee moves over. He'll count it, but it won't count for anything. Oh! Oh! That's got a big reaction. That double foot stomp from Peril is a trademark move of his. Well, there's some blood on Kona, and it may be residue from from a pedal Aguayo who is already going up to the to the top of the cage now and Conan is joining him. Oh please. Already these guys are in tough, tough shape, Mike. Chris, we talked earlier about the feud between Conan and CN Cars that drew 50,000 fans. That was the big feud and has been for the last year and a half prior to Conan and Pedro Aguayo hooking up. And as well, Pero Aguayo feuding with Cien Caras and his two brothers, the Dynamite Brothers. Pero now with a tremendous move and knocks Conan down and clotheslines him. Pero Aguayo has been at the top of his game for nearly 20 years, as we said. It was way back in 1975 that he held the NWA World Metaweight Champion. And again, a double boot stop. And Conan is calling foul, foul, low blow. So what? The most popular wrestler, bar none, in Mexico up until just a few months ago. Well, the referee 
is counting, but I'm not sure why. He's saying, look, you guys have got to go up to the top of the cage. These guys have been brutalized by one another already. There is such fire, such fury, such hatred and anger for, these, for one another that it looks like they are already spent. The blood just flowing down the face of Perro. I wonder if at any point there will be a oh. problem with vision. Yeah, perhaps now. That's a good point, Mike. I wonder if Perro Aguayo can see. Oh, good Lord. I hope the ambulance is still hanging around. Perro's face an absolute crimson mask at this point. Another big reaction. You can tell just how hated Conan is here in Lucha Libre. He has been not nearly as damaged in terms of blood being let as has Pedro Aguayo. Pero nailed Conan right there with a clothesline off the ropes and double oh. foot stomp to the back. No defense against that except to kind of try to suck it up and drive on. All right, Aguayo moves up to the top of the cage. And Conan is, oh, he, oh I was going to say, oh, he got him. Nailed him with a low blow right there, and that'll bring Carroll back down to the mat. I think he realized, Mike, he didn't have the strength to do anything other than that. That was his only move at that point to come up with the foul, and the low blow worked well for Conan. Conan is 20 years younger than Pedro Aguayo. He's got strength and stamina and energy that perhaps Aguayo might not have at 49 years old. But he's carrying around a lot of weight, and he may not be in as great condition aerobically as is Pedro Aguayo. All right, what we're seeing now is Eddie Guerrero and Madonna's boyfriend, Eddie Guerrero, watching this match on the monitor. You see the haircut's been finished. They did the, uh, uh, the the last part of that cut back in the locker room, apparently. And you see Eddie Guerrero and Madonna's boyfriend cheering on Conan, oh. at least up to that point, before Pero makes a comeback. Yeah, they clearly want Conan to win this match. That move almost, but wait a minute, where are they going? It looked like they were leaving the locker room area. On a dead run, in fact. I'm going to look to the back here if I can, Chris. Uh, and see what happens if anyone comes out of that locker room. The momentum having shifted to Pedro Aguayo. Those folks who want Conan to win this match have got to be really agitated backstage. Yeah, Conan's out of it. Well, thankfully, we have the steel cage here that hopefully will take any kind of outside interference uh, out of play in this main event. When you have had trouble in the past, oh! That is the most vicious double boot I have ever seen. My guess is Aguayo can just take his time in going over the, the, the cage. He's up on the top rope now. It's tough enough to climb up with those boots on. It looks like he's already out. Oh, Conan grabs off. Again, this is the highest cage I think I have ever seen, Mike. Oh, look at that. Conan may actually throw Aguayo out. Aguayo is driving him face first into the steel bars. This is scary. Conan now is going to try and balance himself on the ropes. But he takes a vicious elbow from Perro that sends him all the way to the mat. I'd like to know where Madonna's boyfriend and Eddie Guerrero went. All right, at this point, you've got to think this is just whoever can withstand the there's, most. There's the camera inset, and you see that, that Madonna's boyfriend has something in his hand as he and Eddie Guerrero come through the, uh, the backstage area. All right, and now the fans are beginning to react. They are out here. Eddie Guerrero has got something. It's like a cup of, uh, of Coca-Cola. What's he got? Oh. oh, and he threw it right in the face of Perro. And threw something else. Hey, if there's no DQ. Those are brass nuts. Look at Conan load up with the brass nuts. Oh, how much more damage can he inflict on Perro Aguayo? This is a no DQ match. I guess anything goes. And Conan knows, and he's causing the Mexican crowd here. 
Conan knows that he has got this match won. It's a fait accompli. It's finished. And now all he's doing is inflicting damage on Pedro Aguayo. It looks like he has put them inside the brass nuts inside the knee brace. Oh, this is brutal. This is a hold that he calls the Niagara driver. Oh, he nailed him with it. Look at the blood streaming uh, from the scalp. It's actually pouring out like buckets at this point. If there's any sense here, I think this match should be stopped. Aguayo not only can't see, but he doesn't know who he is or where he is. It almost looks at this point like Conan is not that interested in climbing the cage. Let's see what he does. If he did climb the cage, what could Aguayo do about it? Oh, and those brass knucks this time driven straight into that opened up forehead. Uh, this, this is really tense here. We are sitting near the fans, and a lot of the fans are making a move almost to charge the ring. The police are here. Referee Trophy Casas, Pepe Casas, is oh. trying to stop Madonna's boyfriend and Eddie Guerrero from going through the cage door. This is very dangerous. Some fans are being thrown out here, the ones who are the most unruly, but already we're getting... A little moonshot there as uh, referee Pepe Casas pulls Eddie Guerrero down. The fans of Lucha Libre take this very, very seriously. Pedro Aguayo again. There you see the brass knucks. Very clearly, in fact. He tosses them back over the top of the cage to Eddie Guerrero, who puts them into his trunks. Pedro Aguayo is a legend in this country, in Mexico, in Lucha Libre. Uh, oh, oh yeah. my God. Chris, Pedro Aguayo's chest is completely covered now with blood. At some point, Aguayo becomes unable to continue. Oh, the loss of blood here has to weaken him to a point where I'm not even sure that Pero, even if Conan wasn't in the ring, I'm not sure whether Pero could climb this cage or not. Just a tremendous beating being dished out now by Conan. And finally, some offense from Pero Aguayo. Totally unexpected by us and by Conan. We talked earlier about that heart. Uh, and he just doesn't have it. He just does not have the energy left. I think this loss of blood has sapped his energy reserve, and here come the brass nuts back in again. Surely, Pedro Aguayo should have somebody watching this match backstage on the monitor as well. Great close-up by our camera crew. You see the brass nuts wrapped around the fingers of Conan as he continues to abuse his opponent, Pedro Aguayo. The police and the ushers now are very, very concerned. And certainly I don't blame them. It is very tense here at this moment right now. Eddie Guerrero and Madonna's boyfriend are manhandling the referee. Guerrero wants to get inside the steel cage. Guerrero trying to open the steel cage door, and the referee, Pepe Casas, will not allow him. Pedro Aguayo is flailing away, as is Conan. But Conan, keep in mind, with the upper hand, obviously because of the brass knucks and because Pedro Aguayo has lost so much blood. This, in many ways, is already over. And again, the brass knucks are thrown out. Conan and Eddie Guerrero. Guerrero playing a game of catch with those brass knucks over the top of the cage. Totally unnecessary. And Pedro Aguayo, wait a minute. Here they are, Los Hermanos Dinamita, the Dynamite Brothers. This is what we talked about earlier. Cien Caras, Mascara Año Dos Mil, and Universo Dos Mil. What the hell are they doing here? They're not even on the card. Cien Caras, Mascara Año Dos Mil, Universo Dos Mil, have attacked Eddie Guerrero and Madonna's boyfriend. Guerrero wants out. He's already been humiliated. He's already gotten his head shaved. Eddie Guerrero trying to get out. And, and the crowd is even coming into play here. Uh, Universo Dos Mil with a low blow knee drop right into Eddie Guerrero. And that's Sian Carlos. 
The Encada show is strong Madonna's boyfriend into the cage. But it looks like Conan is coming out of the cage. Conan's already up at the top, but Cien Paris is climbing the cage. These are the two men that feuded. We told you about it earlier. Cien Paris is at the top of the cage and nails Conan with a right hand. And Conan lands in between the cage and the rope. And now, Pedro Aguayo starts to dish it out to Conan. A tremendous drama we have had here. At first, Mike, we thought there would be no end to the beating Pedro Aguayo would suffer at the hands of Conan and the Brass Nuts. Unexpectedly, the Dynamite Brothers, Los Hermanos Dinamita, as they're known south of the border, came to the ring to try and even this score for Pedro Aguayo. Now, Pedro up to the top rope. What? Oh, no! We saw it from the second rope, and now we've seen it from the top rope. Pedro Aguayo has dropped both feet onto Conan. He's climbing the ring. Now he's climbing the cage. He's over. He's over the top of the cage. He's going to win this match. First to the floor. He's there. It's been a night of miracle comeback, Chris. And this is just another one. Pero Aguayo does it. Pulls out the cage match with a victory over Conan. An unbelievable victory. Fans to watch Los Dinamitos. Mascara on your Mil. Universo Los Mil, and especially the Encada, who has feuded before with Conan. Carroll looks anything but the winner, but obviously, as you see, the referee raises his hand in victory. I'll tell you, Mike. Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico, indeed. This is a tremendous blow to the career of Conan. He will survive, but he was beaten by a man 20 years old. An insult. Well, maybe it should be master of Conan oh, okay. after this match. And Pedro Aguayo will make a victory round. I hope he doesn't get anywhere close to that the fan who clocked Eddie Guerrero. That's one thing in wrestling. If you're a fan and you hit a wrestler, you will get hit back. We still do not know the condition. Of Octagon, and we will try to get that to you in future broadcasts. I think, Mike, the future of AAA Lucha Libre in America and throughout the world is assured. This clearly one of the most popular wrestling styles, one of the most popular promotions in all of professional wrestling. You see in the ring now the team of the Gringos Locos, or at least three quarters of that team. Madonna's boyfriend and Eddie Guerrero. Here's the replay, and seeing Karras came out of nowhere, nailed Conan with the punch. Conan down, cracks himself on the top rope, and that allowed Pero Aguayo to climb the cage and come out victorious and win this steel cage grudge match. There you see Pero making his way now down the backside of the cage. Who would have thought? <laughs> Unbelievable. And the drop down to the floor, and it's all over. It has been a, a, a tough night for the Hurubos, a very good night for the technical. Carroll definitely looks worse for wear here. He's being helped by a, a suitcase. And he hit, he hit Madonna's boyfriend, and now Eddie Guerrero in the back with a suitcase that was at ringside. And Eddie Guerrero says, I don't think that I want to deal with this guy. Conan, wait a minute. Conan's climbing up into the crowd. Conan and Pedro Aguayo are out in the crowd. Apparently a fan got overzealous. And you have pointed this out before, Mike, that Conan can snap. 
and snap he does here too i'm not sure what's going to happen security has come down to ringside in full force to try and separate these wrestlers Ed Oglio, i think went out to uh, to protect the fans from conan not to protect conan from the fans what an unbelievable matchup that was well, we promised, and I think that we delivered tonight wrestling like you have never seen it before. This last match, though, I'll tell you, look at it, Pedro Aguayo, one of the bloodiest, notorious uh, matches I have ever seen. Look at Aguayo. They're still trying to keep him separated from Conan. You see, as, he, as he's talking, he's, he's actually spitting up the blood. Oh. some breathtaking action tonight wild style real quick much faster pace than you have ever seen before very dangerous and fast moving and flamboyant the outrageous outfits i think i hope that we have been able to give you a sense of just what lucha libre is all about very exciting very unpredictable and a lot of guys a lot of through the rope action and legends like pedo aguayo Pero now back to the ring for almost a victory lap here. Referee Pepe Casas raises the hands of the victor and this huge crowd at the Los Angeles Sports Arena with a standing ovation. Everybody's on their feet. Well, this was built as a match in which the friendship has ended and the war has begun. Certainly, Pero Aguayo has won the battle in the steel cage. Conan has been defeated, but he'll be back. He remains the IWC World Heavyweight Champion. Fans all around ringside now waving the flag from Mexico. In celebration, Pero Aguayo, the winner of this steel cage main event when worlds collide. Well, we said in the Mexican community, it was the most eagerly anticipated event since the World Cup of Soccer. Now, you can see why. Some real breathtaking action and style, as we have said so many times before, wrestling like you have never seen it before. A lot of people now calling this the world's most popular style of professional wrestling. And it's going to take a long time before the 18, 20,000 fans here at the LA Sports Arena are able to get out. That's, that's dedication, kissing a man who you probably don't know, whose face is all bloody. Chris, when we mentioned earlier the fact that Carol Aguayo is regarded as the wrestler with the biggest heart in all of Mexico. Now Octagon Cito comes out. The mini superstar Octagon Cito wants to come to the ring also apparently with Carol. When we talked earlier about him having the biggest heart in all of Mexico, we had no idea that he would could be possibly able to pull out a victory under the circumstances as we saw them in this steel cage match. It has been a great night here at the L.A. Sports Arena. This is the home to NBA games, the countless boxing championship bouts. I think this will go down as one of the most historic, exciting nights ever in this great arena, Mike. No doubt about it, Chris. Triple A has arrived on the scene nationally. We're talking about all across the country. New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and now available on pay-per-view. And let's not forget, coming up on November 16th, live on TBS, it's the Clash of the Champions. 8.05 Eastern, 5.05 here on the West Coast. The Butcher, Avalanche, and Kevin Sullivan, now known as the three faces of fear, face Dave Sullivan, Hulk Hogan, and Sting. And of course, Mike today and I will be there live on the 900 line, 1-900-909-9900 with a backstage pass, exclusive interviews that you will not get anywhere else. And Mike, we're being told we're going to try to get an interview with Conan. Yes, Chris, we've just been notified of that fact. We are working right now to try and get Conan to ringside for an interview. Chris Cruz is going to try and set up. What a card we saw tonight. It was definitely a night of comebacks. Harold Aguayo pulling off the victory over Conan in the steel cage. And prior to that, that double hair versus double mask matchup, Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine defeated by Octagon and Santo when it looked like there was no chance for Octagon and Santo. 
from the Los Angeles Sports Arena. Good night, everybody. I'm Mike Tenay, speaking for Chris Cruz.